What if I told you that I have solved the DLC for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet before it released? In this video, I want to talk about two things, that what's going to happen in the DLC, and also that we might have an evil villain after all. So, with that being said, make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe to the video if you guys are enjoying this. Um, these are videos I normally don't put out, and I'm kind of just testing the waters to see how they do. I've had a lot of fun, you know, writing a script for this, um, but... That being said, I want to go ahead and get down into it because this video has got a lot of meat and potatoes. So, let's first talk about what the DLC is going to be. I think the DLC is going to involve us going back into Area Zero. So, before we continue on that little topic, you have to know why we would go back into Area Zero. And it all involves going into the library at the school. So, for those that don't know, in the school library, you actually can read the Scarlet and Violet book. And there's a few things it talks about. The first thing is the person who wrote the book. His name is Heath. The second thing is it talks about three books. The Scarlet Book, the Violet Book, and an Unknown Book. This book, it's not for the Pokemon Unknown, but it's another book similar to the Scarlet and Violet Book. I assume this book is actually Heath's copy of the book, one that is full and not having missing data entries like you see in the Scarlet and Violet Book. The next thing that's important in this book is it actually talks about three Pokemon. Two of them are version exclusives. One is a fusion of Kabalion, Terrakion, and Verizion. At least it looks that way. The second book in Pokemon Scarlet actually talks about a Pokemon that looks like Suicune, except it's Suicune mixed with Raikou and Entei in it as well. It seems to me that these Pokemon are definitely going to be more than what you would, uh, normally would encounter, and they are going to be in Area Zero, and probably are going to be the cause of the terrestrial phenomenon. Now. That's what I would say, except we have a third Legendary. This gets brought up as long... You actually wouldn't have noticed this unless there's two things. It gets brought up at the very end when you're actually going and talking to all your classmates, well, Arvin, Nimona, and Penny, specifically Arvin's route, at the very end of the game once you've done the Ace Tournament. He shows this book and it shows a picture of a Pokemon, but the text is faded out, so you can't really make out what it is. I believe this is going to be our third Legendary, and this is going to be what started... The terrestrial phenomena on the, across the entire region in Paldea. I do think the very first ones to do this, however, were not Cryodon and Mariodon. I believe it is in response to some kind of fused mechanic in Suicune's evolution line and in the uh, Swords of Justice evolutionary line. And I say evolutionary line because they're not really evolving. However, it does involve all the Swords of Justice and all the dogs. So that being said. I believe that the DLC is most definitely going to Area Zero. Now, why would we go to Area Zero and why would these Pokemon just show up? I believe that Gita is going to send us down there to do some research, which is where we're going to encounter not the third legendary, but the hybrid, and just for short, I'm going to call them Verizion and Suicune. Uh, it's going to be where we encounter either a Suicune or Verizion, depending on what version of the game you've got. That being Scarlet getting Suicune and Violet getting Verizion line. So once you're down there, you're going to see them. Po you're going to see those two Pokemon, and you're going to figure out and explore and kind of figure out what happened. I also believe you are going to get the third copy of the book here, which tells the full story of Heath. Now Heath is a character that went missing. Not a lot's known about him, other than what's in the book that I'm showing on screen at this point in time. However, I believe he had someone that went down there with Area Zero with him. For him to have made a book, obviously he had to go down to Area Zero and come back up. However. It would be very unlikely that he alone would be able to do this, as we've seen both in Toro and Sada's book that they ended up going with a small team. Now, speaking of Toro and Sada, who approved them to go down into Area Zero to do research? As throughout the game has been said, Area Zero is a very, very harsh place, and most people say most people are forbidden to go down there because of how dangerous it is. So why would you let your lead researchers go down there and you know, issue a problem where they could get hurt. I think Gita, the chairwoman of the Pokemon League, is the one responsible for sending them down there. I also think Gita went down there with Heath originally. So, to talk about Gita and shift gears of why I think Gita might actually be the evil villain of the team, there's two things. First, let's talk about how she is related to Area Zero. Now, at first glance, when you meet Gita, she seems fine. She's the chairwoman of the Pokemon League, and she is the acting champion. Not the champion as in Amona in your player character, but as the, the actual final champion in the game. Most people notice that her team isn't very strong to be a champion's team. 
However, she has one thing that is very distinct in the game. Her t ace Pokemon is a Pokemon that is only found in Area Zero natively out in the wild. You can find them in raids and in outbreaks. However, it is typically only found in Area Zero. Glamora specifically is found in Area Zero. Its pre-evolution can be found in outbreaks, though. So how did she end up going down there and getting this Pokemon unless she physically went down there? I guess someone could have went down there and traded, but I don't believe that that's the case. I believe what's happening is she went down there with Heath, and she actually has the third copy of the book at some point in time that covers up what happens. In the game, after the or during the Ace Tournament, or it, uh, it's either after the Ace Tournament or during the Mona's fight at the end, she has a statement. And this statement really caught me off guard, and I've been thinking about it for over a month at this point. And she says on the along the lines of, so Gita says, this is extremely close to what I would call my ideal world. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's odd. That's something you don't normally hear someone good say. And the reason you say that is because it's happened a few times in the Pokemon series, and I believe it is by Cyrus and Getsus. Both of them talk about their ideal world. Specifically, Cyrus wants to go into the, the distortion world, and he wants to create an ideal world using Giratina. But that is what I think is Gita's ultimate goal, is she is wanting to create an ideal world full of extremely hard battles for people to enjoy. So, with that being said, where does she tie into Heath? I think originally, Heath stumbled upon a way to go to a different time period and find these you know, past and future Pokemon, depending on your games, and Gita saw this as a way to challenge. Now, I also think that the third legendary ties into this is in Gita actually has the third legendary, and I believe that the team we see her use as the champion fight isn't her actual team. I want to bet that it is actually comprised of mostly Area Zero Pokemon, and a few here and there, like King Gambit, of course. And I believe the third legendary Pokemon has some sort of specific power. We've seen this in the past with Celebi being able to time travel. Jirachi's a wish granter. Um, you know, you got the space and time Pokemon, Dialga Palkia. Arceus, the god of, well, Pokemon. It wouldn't surprise me if the third Pokemon in this game, or the third main cover legendary, if you want to call it that, is has something with the ability to grant wishes or uh, bring Pokemon from a different dimension. I don't believe that it is an actual time travel phenomenon that we get to lean on in the past or in the actual story of the game that being said i think that what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have to fight gita one more time in this dlc and this time she will be as a villain not a good person or not on the side of the protagonist as we are going to try to end her plans of trying to summon more and more pokemon from the past and future if they are even actually from the past and future but that is a video for a different day hopefully you guys enjoyed this if you have make sure to leave a like Comment down below, and I'll catch you guys next time. Goodbye!